welcome back to my channel. Happy Wednesday to everyone. We're going to be creating this beautiful double gate fold slim line greeting card today. And I'm not sure if you remember in my last video, I mentioned that I was waiting for a couple of collections to become available to order from scrapbook.com. In the meantime, I did pick up a couple of paper pads from Joann's. So these are Park Lane paper pads. It's their store brand. And this particular one is Woodland. I think it's absolutely beautiful. The colors are very warm and rich. It has very nature inspired patterns and almost a little bit of a boho vibe as well because the geometrics on the regular paper patterns are kind of, um, updated and modern. There is plaids, there is foiling, there is lots of florals in here. So I'm excited to work with this. And it occurred to me it would be a fun challenge for myself if I could create all of my projects for March out of this one paper pad. So let me know in the comments if you think that's gonna be a good idea and whether you think I can pull it off. But I just am so inspired by the different patterns and the way you could combine them differently to get different looks. And so that does not mean that if you don't pick up this paper pad, you won't be able to create the projects that I make in March. I'm just going to be sharing very versatile bases with measurements and you can take those to any paper collection that you want to work with or any theme. So if you think that's going to be a great idea, let me know in the comments. I think it'll be a fun challenge and I'm looking forward to seeing if I can pull it off. But but if you want to start with this card and make this double gatefold slimline card with me today, then stick with me and we will make this together. Okay, so this base looks kind of complicated, but really it's very simple. And you're only going to need one piece of cardstock to create the base. And I'm going to use 65 pound weight cardstock just because we're putting a lot of scores in and I want it to be relatively flat because we're going to wrap it in a band. And so my piece of cardstock here is nine by 10. And when we get it all folded up, it will be a four by nine slimline card. So I'm going to come in, I'm not gonna show you at the top of this because this scoreboard is looking a little janky these days since I dropped it, but I'm gonna score it at one and then three and then seven and then nine. And so when we fold this up, we're basically having it and then having it again, have having it again. So we're going to be able to show the different layers of the pattern paper. And so I'm just going to very quickly cover the measurements for the cardstock and the collection paper, and then we'll go ahead and start building it. So the first piece that we want is obviously for the back, and we're going to cover the back portion here with our cardstock that measures three and seven eighths. Can you see my hand? Three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. And the pattern paper is three and three quarter by eight and three quarter. So we're going to get that really nice, generous border. Our next set of measurements are going to be the two inch sections that show on the outside. And I have a cardstock measure. See, when I'm doing the slimline, I have to remember where my hands are. Um, it's one and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. And the card stack is one and three quarter by eight and three quarter. And you're going to need two of those. I picked the pattern that I liked the best because more of it will show when it's open. And our final strip are going to be these one inch portions down the center. So you have a card stack measurement of seven eighths of an inch by eight and seven eighths. And your pattern paper is three quarters by eight and three quarters. So you have two of those and we're gonna layer those on the front. So in order to get room for our details and our embellishments, we're gonna have to put a band on that. And so I've just got this piece of white cardstock. Again, this is 65 pound weight. 
and it is two and three quarters of an inch high by 10 inches wide. And we're gonna do the scoring after we get the layers on because I want it to fit perfectly across and I don't think it will be easy to slide on and off if we just score it and then adhere it. So we're gonna do that part when we get to it. We have two portions of the pattern paper with the cardstock that will cover that band. And so these are two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. And the pattern paper is two and a half by three and three quarter. And we need two of those as well. Our final piece for this is going to be, so my 110 pound card stack is three and a quarter by five. The card stack is three and an eight by four and seven eighth and the pattern paper is three by four and three quarters. So that's gonna give me all the same nice borders all the way around and we need a little bit of extra for this card so that we can add the heavy embellishments. So let's go ahead and start adding the paper layers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start on the inside and work my way out. And so I'm gonna put my beautiful background paper. This is absolutely gorgeous. And I think the pink and the orange together is absolutely a beautiful vintage -y boho vibe. And so I'm just gonna add these with my regular borders all the way around. So a big news that I have to share is that we do not have any snow in our backyard. And so we did have a couple of nice warm days where we got a little melting. And so the one thing I notice about that is because we have a new neighbor after 19 years of living in the same location, um, they moved in and they have a beautiful orange cat. And so that cat, I have decided to call Cheddar. I don't know what its actual name is because we don't know the neighbors yet, but Cheddar is hunting in the backyard. And it's so funny because it was very easy to see when we had snow, but he's out in the field portion. So we let that grow over a little bit. And so he is pretty, or she, it could be a she, um, very well camouflaged in that overgrown wintered over straw area. Um, so I haven't seen cheddar in a couple of days and so I'm kind of excited for the green to come back and then maybe we'll be able to see him a little better. I don't know, um, the other neighbor has a cat on the uh, corner on the road opposite ours and that cat comes through our yard every day. I know that cat's name is actually Alex because the owner of the cat calls it for dinner every night. I mean, we can hear it when we sit out on our patio, but I call that cat Mr. Tibbles instead of Alex. And I think Mr. Tibbles is on his way doing cat stuff and he cuts through our yard all the time. And I can tell because he leaves his little footprints in the snow and we see him often cutting through our hedges or on the road in front of our house. So I think it's really cute that the neighbor's pets kind of use our property as well. They've kind of moved in and made themselves comfortable. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, I'm really more excited about there not being snow. There's a little bit still in the front where we had piled it up when we were shoveling out the driveway. But for the most part, I think we're done with that. We've had several nice warm days and I'm really looking forward to spring. Okay, so now we've got the pattern paper on that card and you see how beautifully the contrast is. And it's really nice that I was able to pick this pattern and I really liked the B side. So I just used one sheet to cover that. And then I wound up using two sheets of the card stack cause I made a couple of cutting errors. Um, but I think you could make this out of one sheet of card stock and one sheet of pattern paper if you have your base already set. And so that actually is another um, thing I wanted to mention. We have a very exciting uh, product share coming up. A brand reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to use some of their tools and give a review, a feedback on them. Um, and I was very excited. You know how I am with tools. I have to really want something for a long time before I'll invest in it. So to get one um, and have the brand reach out to me and 
and ask honestly what I think about it. That's really uh, very flattering and it's gonna be a lot of fun to use it. So far, I'm very impressed. Uh, but I want to make sure that I know exactly what it's all about and whether or not I am recommending it um, honestly because I think I owe that to you guys. So look forward to that coming up in the future, but I'm pretty sure um, that we're going to love it a lot because I've used it a bit and I'm very impressed with it so far. But more news on that in the future. That's just a little sneaky peek. So we got to put a band on our card now so that we can put the embellishments on. Here comes that. You see what I mean about tools? This one is very broken and I keep using it. Um, but what I wanna do is add my piece that's going to be the band underneath here. It doesn't matter where it's lining up, but I do want to have the end of the card, the edge, fall on one of the score lines so that I can score right where it needs to fold. And I've got the score tool from my envelope punch board because I can't find the other one. I don't know where it went. Okay, so I wanna move this down just a little and then score on this line as well. And that way I'm gonna get a good crisp fold but it isn't going to be exactly the measurement that would be on the board. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold these flaps over now so that I can keep everything square and straight up to the top. And now I know that this is going to wrap around well because I am wrapping it with the card inside. So here is where those edges are gonna fall. I put some double-sided adhesive on the inside of this flap and that will be enough to secure it. I'm going to add some additional layers of that pattern paper again so that will hold it in place very well. So I'm just going to not get it super tight. I'm just right up there to the edge and then you can see it will slide down very easily. Then I'm just gonna flip this over here and add the back piece. So remember that we cut these out of the same pattern paper. Because I'm using the off cuts, it is not exactly running in the, direct, in the right direction, but I'm okay with that because this is gonna be on the back and it's still that beautiful pattern paper. And then I'm gonna flip this over and add another piece to the front. So on the front, I would care more, but most of it's going to be hidden um, underneath the panel that we're adding for the, the focal image and our embellishments. So here is that beautiful card with the flap so here is my panel for my focal image and my embellishments. And remember, this is on very sturdy 110 pound cardstock. So I'm just going to lay this on here and make a note of where that falls because I want to keep my adhesive on the inside of that border so that we don't accidentally seal that up. Now you can see where it's gonna fall here. I'm just going to add my adhesive across the top and that will make sure that it doesn't close anything up. So I also want to include a little bit of adhesive besides the tape because this will be a moving part and I don't want it to accidentally come unattached. I would typically have my Tombo, but I didn't bring that down today, so I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and add a little bit of hot glue right in the center. And that will make sure that it is very secure. And I'll just flip this over and add that here. Trying to get it pretty square. And you see it still slides perfectly smoothly. So now what I wanna do is bring in my focal image. And this was one of the cut parts from that beautiful paper pad. And not only is it beautifully woodland inspired, but it has a little gold foiling on it. So now you can see when I add this, it is going to cover quite a lot of the first layer of that band, but I'm okay with that because a little bit of it does show and I didn't wanna to leave too much of that white 
cardstock showing. Okay, so what I want to do is finish up my card front with a couple of beautiful floral arrangements. I paired some little birdie craft flowers with some that are from really reasonable ribbon. These are the uh, wild orchid cherry blossom flower in peach and then I've got a couple rosebuds. They are from really reasonable ribbon as well as the burgundy wrinkle ribbon and then I've paired it with natural burlap string instead of ivory this time. There's some die cut foliage here and a little bit of netting. Instead of one large arrangement which would not fit I have two smaller ones and so I'm going to put these on opposite corners so that my trims and all of this balances out in the angle. Unfortunately, there is not enough room for the entire image. And I want to make sure that I keep all of the words visible. So we're going to have to cover up that cute little hedgehog, but we're gonna keep the fox and the butterfly. So I think that is good. And I'm just going to add these with a little hot glue. So that is all for our double gatefold slimline greeting card created with the woodland paper pad from Park Lane from Joann's. If you enjoyed this project, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment. Remember, you can find links to all our social media sites in the description below. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And now thank you so much for watching. Bye.